Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Parkway United Church of Christ. We're so glad you're here, but we're so unaccustomed to it. So you've already seen me running around doing some things that usually I do in secret. So our Facebook page is having a little bit of trouble today just to remind us of who is in charge, not us. And so if anybody is dual, hybrid right now in the sanctuary, in person and on Facebook, if you could echo what I just put on the church page that we're live streaming to my personal page on Facebook, that would be great. So we have a lot of tech on the horizon. So we have been in process with some companies trying to figure out exactly how to do this hybrid worship, right? Hybrid where there are people in person and there are people remote um, nearby or around the country. Actually, we had someone for a while from the church who was living about six months overseas during the pandemic, and so we were international for a while, which was kind of exciting to think about. So these tech advances will come, uh, but not today, and so we're thankful for your patience. So we know a lot has happened during these many, many months that we have been physically apart from each other. We know that people have gotten married and babies have been born, and people have graduated and there are empty nests and there are new jobs and retirements and people who have moved, including people who have moved into assisted living. We know that there are some widows or widowers that they experience the death of a spouse during this time. We also know that there have been other griefs that have weighed heavily upon us. Um, our urn up here, Ruth Murray, Many of you know the beloved Ruth Murray, who was part of our congregation for so long and part of our choir. Uh, she has incredible connections deep and wide through St. Louis, and we're going to celebrate her life uh, early fall. But just a lot has happened to us, right? A number of you have had surgeries and diagnoses um, and wonderful things that have happened in your life. So we look forward to catching up with you and figuring out how to weave ourselves together again. And so we invite you to think about the gift of peace this morning, this peace that sometimes eludes us, this peace that sometimes surprises us because it's so deep inside of us that it can't be touched, that it cannot fade. And so we invite you to imagine yourself bathing in peace, allowing yourself to feel the gift, the blessing of peace pouring out from the holy upon you. Allow yourself to feel rooted and grounded in peace no matter what is going on in your mind, in your spirit, in your body, in the world. Find ways to feel and welcome, be available and vulnerable to that gift of peace. And then we invite you to imagine how you can share that peace, how you can spill over with that peace to others so that they can feel it too. May the peace of Christ be with you.
On this day that feels like a new beginning, our first scripture reading is from the first verse of the first psalm. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that the sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on this law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. We invite you to please rise if you're comfortable doing so, and join us in our call to worship. Come away for a while. Stand apart from your daily pace and place to experience the holy now. Sing aloud to God, our strength and supply. Shout for joy to the one who always listens to us. Hear God's word for us and do it. Give to God your loyalty and your labor. Grateful to be here, immersing ourselves in this sacred space, we rest and we are empowered to engage again. Come away for a while. Please join us in our opening prayer. God of awesome moments and intense challenges, grant us eyes to see 
and ears to hear you in our community today. We have come away from our daily routines to encounter you and your mystery. We have dared to step out of our safe places to hear what you have to say to us. We are a bit hesitant at the thought of what you might ask of us, yet we are eager for your presence, your call, and your empowerment. Amen. And so some people like to go look at water, some people like to take a bath, some people like to go out in a boat, some people like music, some people like to go for a walk. I bet there are things that you do that allow you to rest and to be apart and separate from people. So it's not just something that we're supposed to do once in a while, but it's something we're supposed to do regularly. God tells us to do it at least once a week to set aside that day to be with ourselves, to be with God, to let all of the things go that we're supposed to be doing. And so we want to invite you to think about what that means in your life, what that might mean to get in the boat, or to go for a walk, or to find a space or a place in your mind where you can go, that you can rest. Because Jesus said to do it, because God said to do it in the Ten Commandments. Remember last Sunday we talked about the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions? And so this is something that we are supposed to do, and that we will get blessing and benefit from it. The people around us will find blessing and benefit when we are rested, when we spend time apart, when we spend time alone. Please pray with us. God, we thank you that you love us every day of the week, whether we're active and busy or alone, apart, separate from everyone. Help us to feel you in us and to be hungry and thirsty for that connection, that friendship with you, so that we spend time with just you once in a while or every day or somehow regularly. Help us to plan that and to get to those places where it's just us. Bless us as we rest. Bless us as we do your work. Bless us as we feel your love and share your love with others. Amen. And as we sing and bless, we invite kids that are comfortable to do so to go with Emily and Barb in the back, um, outside or in the public hall with lots of space.
Our second scripture reading is a passage from Mark about Jesus and the apostles on the boat, which I will read with both feet on the floor. <laughs> the apostles then rendezvoused with Jesus and reported on all that they had done and taught. Jesus said, come off by yourselves. Let's take a break and get a little, little rest. For there was constant coming and going. They didn't even have time to eat. So they got in the boat and went off to a remote place by themselves. Someone saw them going and the word got around. From the surrounding towns, people went out on foot, running, and got there ahead of them. When Jesus arrived, he saw this huge crowd. At the sight of them, his heart broke. Like sheep with no shepherd they were. He went right to work teaching them. They beached the boat at Gisenaret and tied up at the landing. As soon as they got out of the boat, word got around fast. People ran this way and that, bringing their sick on stretchers to where they had heard he was. Wherever he went, village or town or country crossroads, they brought their sick to the marketplace and begged him to let them touch the edge of his coat. That's all. And whoever touched them, whoever touched him became well. May God help us to find truth and guidance in these words. Jesus said, come away by yourselves, take a break, and get a little rest. You remember when the pandemic first started and the shutdown was necessitated, we were told to separate ourselves from one another, to get out of circulation, to remove ourselves from all the comings and goings, from this and that. Many people stayed home. It was hard for some people, but appreciated by some others who have a propensity for alone time and are introverted and appreciate that space, sacred space away. And some people, regardless of their temperament or their intentions or their predispositions to being alone or with others, had to go to do their work had to go to fulfill their obligations, whether that was work or family or neighbors or community. And many of the ones who stayed home weren't necessarily resting because of the responsibilities they had there, because of the others that were in that space with them. Some people say, what would you tell your younger self now? and they appreciate thinking that through. Others read or remember the things that they thought long ago because those also are messages that come the other way. We should also pay attention to where we were before and allow ourselves to be encouraged, enlightened, available to wisdom that was from another day. And so I want to share with you now something from March 2020 that was posted by Marin Terabasi, one of my favorite theologians right now. She's a UCC pastor in New Hampshire. And she said this about a prayer for a full house. God, we pray for those for whom lockdown and quarantine and shelter in place does not mean loneliness. 
We pray for those who, desperate to be alone, always have someone there, working from home, needing assistance, or just talking. We pray for those who can't work from home, who look at the walls and wonder how long until these walls won't be there and food will be in short supply. We pray for those with gloomy teenagers, prostrate with the absence of friends, like having their hearts cut out, who are missing everything, everything, everything important in their lives, parents not on that list, and have half the dishes in the house crusted with food in their rooms. We play for or pray for parents and caregivers of small children who have gone through all the library books and all the sidewalk chalk and the toys and games and puzzles and paper airplanes in the backyard and too much Paw Patrol who have negotiated fights, said things they want to take back, counted the hours till bedtime and do not want to be told one more time that they're lucky. We name and pray for those for whom home is never a safe place and for whom with a person under pressure is deadly. God, we pray for those who are not lonely and therefore everyone assumes are fine. Do not give them just your companionship, O Holy One, but your blessing of an inner experience of personal space and free time. This pandemic has been a lot of things and different from the person sitting next to you, different from the people in your home and in your friendship circle and in your community. We've all had a unique experience of it. Regardless, we're at this point now where so many of us are feeling like we're coming out of it because we are fortunate, we are privileged to be in a place where we have had access to vaccines and where we have the ability to spread apart and to continue on with our lives. We are all at this same place, although we're different in it. Our experiences, our perspectives, our histories, our story are different. In today's gospel lesson, which is part of the revised common lectionary, and so across all Christian traditions, there are people reading this story about Jesus telling the disciples and all the others to rest. Separate from all the comings and goings, from all the this and that that's happening. Find rest and renewal, the Sabbath idea of the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions. The disciples had just returned from their two by two mission. You remember Jesus told them to go out two by two and not to take a lot of things with them, but to allow themselves to receive the hospitality of the people that were in the towns and places where they visited. Not to take too many things, including change of clothes or food, but to just trust that when they went, they would be well received and that if they entered a home and were welcome to stay there, but if they were not welcomed, to just move on, to go to another place. And so the disciples had had lots of experiences in the midst of chaos, and they needed to unpack what they had experienced and to process all of it. And so Jesus said, come, separate yourself from all the rest that's going on and from where you have been, from what you have experienced, what you have seen and what you have taught in the midst of the people. And so we come to this sanctuary today, our first day back in this space, and we recognize that this indeed is a place of rest. The sanctuary is a place of rest. And if you look at some of the definitions of sanctuary, you see haven or harbor or port in a storm, like our boat, an oasis, a shelter, a retreat, a foxhole, a hideout, a hideaway, a den, an asylum, a safe house, a protection, a security, immunity, currencia. And currencia is from the Spanish to desire, and it invites us to think about this home where we can draw strength. Currencia, you may have heard in the aspect of bullfighting. There's a place in the bull ring where the bull will go where it feels safe. There's like one place that it will keep returning to. It feels safe there and it feels like it can get some strength there because it knows it's up against challenges. And so the sanctuary can be that kind of a place for us. 
Another definition of sanctuary is a nature reserve or preserve like a bird sanctuary or a wolf sanctuary not too far from here, away from predators, away from danger. And you might imagine the imagery of the 23rd Psalm with goodness and mercy following us with calm, cool waters, with a place of lush meadow to lay down in. And then, because we weren't involved in ordering these, the third is a holy place, a temple, or a church. We didn't get the top billing for that. Because this is not the only place that you can find rest and safety and security. It's one of them, and so it's not first on the list, but the idea, the possibility, the image of what can happen in a space like this is broader and deeper than any religious home. So this church sanctuary can be all of those things and can be more. And so maybe there are things that you have missed or maybe you've seen glimpses of them if you've watched us remotely. Maybe it's something in the stained glass window or a color, or maybe you remember an experience that you've had in this space, whether it was a baptism or a wedding or a funeral or a Sunday morning, or maybe you were here alone, or maybe during the pandemic, you found your way here and allowed yourself to be in sanctuary, to be in safety and security, to allow yourself to be surrounded by grace and rooted and grounded in peace and security and safekeeping and quarencia, a reserve or a preserve or a temple. So this is a place to rest. And this is also a place to gather courage and to gather energy and to be renewed so that we can go out again. And so the sanctuary can be a time between other things. A sanctuary can be a place that you go to because of where you've just been. Or a sanctuary can be a place because you know where you're about to go needs you to first be in sanctuary, to first be in rest away from technology and all the other things that call to us. You might know that across the street in our historic sanctuary, we have a beautiful wall hanging that says this, peace be to all who visit this sacred house of God, sanctified by years of prayer. Pause a while. Allow the past to speak words of comfort to your soul, then add your prayer to ours before you go forth from the calm of this shelter into the busy world. So maybe it's the candles. And you know, there are some churches today that are not lighting their candles because they're remembering the wildfires all across the United States. But since it's our first Sunday back, we wanted to light those candles to give you that sacred space and to remind you of the fire, the warmth, the love, the eternal presence of the holy. Maybe it's the organ or the piano or our song leaders who have been so faithful and our guest star, Charlotte, today. Maybe it's the open cross. Maybe it's the prayers that spill over you or bubble up inside of you. Maybe it's the banners or the pyramids or the colors or the communion table or the Boat, which is also stairs if you flip it over. Maybe it's the baptismal font. Maybe it's the sacristy, knowing that all the stuff is in there and we have what we need. We have what we need. Or maybe it's the rafters, the wide open spaces, and the way that things come together. Maybe it's thinking about the architects and the people who came before us. Some of you were there, here, when this space was a dream and when this space came to being. This is a place where you can empty out, and this is a place where you can fill up. This sanctuary is many things, and it is many things for each person. It's not just one thing for someone every time. It changes its form and its function and its faithfulness to us. So in our call to worship, we talked about coming away for a while, about standing apart from our daily paces and places. We talked about singing, we talked about God being our supply and our strength, about shouting for joy, about the example that God gives us to follow. We talked about in this place, 
finding a way to listen to the spirit and the stories of Jesus and allowing ourselves to model our lives after him, to say the things that he said and do the things that he did. We say when we come into the space that we're gonna clear the obstacles so that we can hear God, so we can have an experience of God, not just the words or the ideas, but actually feel the presence of the holy and that we're eager to receive God's guidance and God's direction as we go from this place and to trust that the gifts of the Spirit will be with us when we go from here, to go to those places that God wants us to go, rested and empowered and able to sense where it is that God needs us to go. And we said in our call to worship that we find heart and healing and hope in being together. We have missed being together and we're so grateful that we're still connected with people who aren't physically in this space with us right now. And so this sanctuary can be an oasis. And sometimes you're in this space and you don't quite feel that you're receiving all of these gifts. You're not quite feeling that security and that safety. And it's then that maybe you look at the people around you and allow their confidence, their assurance, their groundedness, their grace to spill over onto you because there's going to be another day when you have it and they don't have it. And you are in that flow and that sharing and that movement of the spirit that goes back and forth. And so we become living sanctuaries for each other. We become places where ones near us can receive safety and security and reassurance and coherencia and strength from us. But we have to go back into the world. We have to leave the sanctuary. It's around this time that I remember the summer camp that I went to every year, the beginning of August, in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. My church, my UCC church, gathered with other UCC churches for a middle school, high school camp. And one of the songs that we sang at the end of the week was about going down from the mountaintop to go back to the valley below so that the people there would know that they can go to the mountains. And remembering that we have to go back and that we have responsibilities and opportunities and blessings and there are needs that we must pay attention to out in the world that we have to go back to. And so we shared today in our opening prayer, we have come away from our daily routines to encounter you, O oh God, in your mystery. We have dared to step out of our safe places to hear what you have to say to us. We're a bit hesitant at the thought of what you might ask of us. Yet we're eager for your presence, your call, and your empowerment. Because we know that we are called from this place to be sanctuary, to be active, to be more and more available to others, to be Christ-like with the things that we say and the things that we do. And then we're called to come together again to tell the story to each other. I like in this particular gospel lesson that Jesus called the disciples so that they could talk with each other about what they had done and what they had taught, what they had experienced out in the world so that they could encourage each other and give each other tips so that they could grow in their wisdom and understanding because of the experiences that they had when they were apart from one another, what they went through, what they learned, how they grew. But what's missing in this for me is that Jesus doesn't say, come away and tell me what you did and taught and learned. That's a missing piece for me in this story because it's so important to talk about what we've learned about ourselves, about each other, about God, about the world when we're apart from each other. It's not just what we did and what we taught, but how we were receivers of wisdom and lessons and grace. And I think it comes in the next section of this gospel lesson because they go out again. You maybe notice that there's a chunk of verses missing and we're gonna get to those in the next couple of weeks as the lectionary kind of moves us around this chapter in the gospel of Mark. But we're told when they go out again, because you have to go out again, the disciples and Jesus went out again to the people. This time it says, when Jesus arrived, he saw the huge crowd and at the sight of them, his heart broke. His heart broke at the sight of the people. In another translation that you might be more familiar with, the New Revised Standard Version, it says that he had compassion for them. 
his heart broke because they were like sheep without a shepherd, even though it's written like Yoda, with no shepherd they were. They were lost. They didn't feel the security. They didn't feel like they had sanctuary with them. They were unsteady. And so his heart broke for them because he loved them, because he was connected with them, because he knew what God wanted him to be about. He knew the fullness of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus' heart broke. And you remember other places in Scripture where Jesus felt so connected to the people that he wept because he knew what it was like, because he was fully human. He knows what it's like to be us. And so his heart broke. He had great compassion for them. He wept because he knew that there was more. He knew that the people needed to have strength and solidarity and security and sweetness in their life. And he knew that he had the gifts to bring to them, the things to teach them and the things to learn from them because his heart broke because he was willing to listen to them. He was willing to understand their story. He was willing to set himself aside, not just to go there to teach, but he was willing to be affected, to be moved to be changed by them. And so his heart breaks, his compassion rises. He is more and more available to them to learn their story and to be a place where they can find respite, where they can find hope, where they can find healing. And so though many of us find ourselves coming out of this pandemic, and maybe this is the first time you've worn a mask in a while because you're in places of safety, We are very much still in the throes of this pandemic, but we have the privilege, we have the power, we have the possibility to go forth and to affect change, to watch, to look, to listen, to allow our hearts to break, to allow our compassion to rise inside of us and to go to those places where we are needed, where our time, where our treasures, where the spiritual gifts that we have been given are needed because we're not out of this wood yet. And when we are even in a safer place, we know that there are still challenges and burdens that people bear. We notice those maybe for the first time or maybe exponentially during the pandemic when we saw the things that people go through on a daily basis. And so you have your list in your mind of the tragedies and travesties that people have to live through And you can bring some change, some sanctuary, some spirit, some gifts to those places, to those people, so that they can be renewed, so that they can find security, so they can find strength, so that they can go about their work and can become, again, light and love and possibility for others. One of you led me to an article this week called, We Could Have Changed the World. We could have changed the world. And it was talking about how we had all these grand ideas when we figured out what was going on in the pandemic, when we figured out what people were in the midst of, when the layers were peeled back and we saw the realities that were always there, we didn't want to pay attention to them. Maybe we were out in our boat somewhere and disconnected from other people. But this idea, we could have changed the world. There's this idea that things are coming back to normal, whatever that is, and so people are getting back into their routines and focusing more on their travel and what they're gonna do next and what they have survived. And they've forgotten that people are still in those places. And we said at the beginning, we're not gonna forget. We're not gonna forget this. We're not gonna let people suffer. We're gonna let our hearts break again and again. We're gonna let our compassion rise. We're gonna bring the gifts that we have been given, the possibilities and the privilege and the spirit that we have, and we're gonna affect change. We're gonna be courageous and deliberate and risk-taking, and we're gonna set ourselves aside, and we're gonna remember the people who need us and who don't have what we have. We're not gonna ignore that. We're not gonna turn our backs on that. We could have changed the world. There's still time. There is still time to put into practice, to put into place our Christ-like living, paying attention to the people around us in our own homes, across the street, across the city, across the globe. And so we have this opportunity again. And we have been in different places, all of us, and we've come back now, and more will come, and we will still stay connected 
to the people who aren't physically present in this space. We're different now. And so we have to tell our stories of where we've been. We have to tell our stories of what we've done, of what we've taught, and of what we have learned so that we can be the gospel, the good news for people, so that we can be this sanctuary, this living sanctuary for others to be able to touch and taste and know, and so that we can be this for each other because we're not immune either to the things that are challenging and burdensome. Please pray with us. Holy One, we are grateful people because there are many of us gathered right now in this sacred space, in this sanctuary, in this place of Corencia, in this place of joy and possibility where we can be empty, where we can be filled, where we can flow with your wisdom, with your grace, with your power, with your tenderness, with your peace. And God, we have heard again from Jesus and the disciples who are learning and growing and maturing in the faith and traveling and teaching and learning and listening, whose hearts are breaking, whose compassion are rising, who are more and more available to the movements of your spirit. And so, God, catch up to us. Be with us as we remember. Be with us as we learn. Be with us as we listen. Be with us as we seek to be more like Jesus, whom you sent to love us and to teach us lessons, sometimes simple, sometimes complicated, about love and how we can be rooted and grounded, centered and sent in your love. Amen. We mentioned earlier weddings and babies being born. We're including London Shea, great granddaughter of Florence Simonson. We're thinking about people who have different experiences of health during this season. We're thinking about Pete Shelton, who is here and healing. We're thinking about Dan Weiss. We're thinking about Ellie Larson. Skip is with us today. We're thinking about Brian McCarter. Beth Watson, we got a special request, maybe you saw that this week from a UCC church in Searcy, Arkansas, asking for letters of support and solidarity from other UCC friends. Totally out of the blue, we got this letter. If you're available to send a card to this woman, she would love it. We're thinking about all who are impacted by COVID-19 as it continues to unfold about gun violence in this land and in other lands, about grieving families in Miami, about unrest in Haiti and South Africa, the flooding in Western Europe, the wildfires, about our St. Louis Association Covenant partners of this past week, Prince of Peace UCC, this coming week, Samuel UCC in Clayton. There are so many things to be in prayer about, and so please join us in prayer. Holy One, we understand that we can pray for ourselves, for our predicaments, for our past, for the possibilities in our future. And we can pray for the people that are close-knit with us in our homes and in our family tree and in our friendship circles and neighborhoods. And we can pray for strangers, too, in places that we have never been. 
people who speak languages and have cultures and traditions and faith experiences that we will never know, but we are connected with them because of our humanity, our common humanity, and so bind us together, O oh God, as we pray for others and as we delight in the things that are of our relationships and as we delight in memories that come and in hopes and dreams that stir us and allow us to move forward with zest. We pray for the gifts of the earth, so many that we are experiencing and receiving in this season of summer, the fullness from the earth. God, we pray for ourselves, we pray for others, we pray for the strangers, we pray that your love would be made known through the actions that we take, through the words that we use, through the things that we don't say and don't do, that we would be more engaged in acts of service, selflessness. God, be present as you are deep in us and all around us as we pray aloud or silently about those celebrations and those concerns, as we pray about ourselves and others and the stranger, as we give thanks and as we cry out, Hear us, O oh God, as we pray. God, you call out to us that we might spend more time with you in a boat, on a walk, in bed, in a special chair set aside for that relationship. There are all kinds of ways that you beckon to us and create space for us to be with you. Continue, O oh God, to do that in old and new ways as we seek to belong to your spirit, to belong to each other. And God, our prayers differ and they align. And so be with us now as we sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us.
You may have noticed that there are some offering plates spread around the sanctuary. If you wanted to move, if you wanted to feel like you're not sitting at home still, uh, if you wanted to move around the sanctuary. And so if you have an offering that you want to put in a plate, uh, they're here and in the back. We are people of generosity and hospitality. And we find traditional ways, old ways, familiar ways, and new ways to be people who reach out, who notice where our gifts are needed and how we can affect change, how we can meet those hungers and thirsts of one another. And so we invite you to find ways that speak to you, that meet that place where your heart breaks for others and find ways to bring mending, to bring healing, to bring hope. Let's say together our response. Praise God, whose many names abound, our peace, our rock, our holy ground, our home, our all, earth's majesty, love, spirit, life, and mystery. Amen. Please join in our prayer of dedication. Holy One, we long for the time when the quiet and humble shall inherit the earth, and all who hunger and thirst after justice shall be satisfied. We believe that, despite the persistence of burden and challenge in the world, now is always the time when more good can be done and we can make a difference. May it be so through the offering of these gifts and the offering of our lives. Amen. And so as we go from this place, we go with the love of God, deep and abiding. And we go with the peace of Christ that is in us and surrounding us. And we go with the reassurances of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who has gifts immeasurable for us over and over again. Go in faith, go in confidence, go in peace to listen, love, and serve. Amen. And please be seated. So this is where our awkwardness comes out again. We aren't exactly sure how we do this hybrid thing. But we want to say thank you for being with us, uh, for not forgetting about us, for actually coming back and reminding us that what we do here is important and has significance. What you do, what you teach us, and what you challenge us to be is important too. We believe that all are accepted, no exceptions. We strive for limitless love, courageous action, and spirited inquiry. We want to wish a happy birthday today to Joe Biondo and to Joan DeGroote. We have opportunities this week, like we do every week. We send out an email on Friday afternoons about things coming up. This is 
the continuance of our United Church of Christ's biennial meeting, General Synod, and some of you have plugged into some of those workshops and worship opportunities. On Wednesday evening, we have our midweek meditation. There's uh, an opportunity to go with Linda Tossing to the World Bird Sanctuary this week. There's a back to school fair at Isaiah 58 that we are a part of this coming weekend. And next Friday, July 25th, Christmas in July, some of us are going to the Grizzlies baseball game and you're invited to come with us. This is a Muslim holiday, Tuesday. It's Eid al-Adha. And on that holiday, something inspiring happens. Uh, our Muslim neighbors uh, have a feast and they eat one third of the meat and they give one third to their neighbors and they give one third to charities and organizations that provide food for the hungry. It's an inspiration for us to understand proportional giving and how our faith compels us to give gifts to each other. Our Tuesday afternoon dialogue continues. Our Tuesday evening dialogue is on a break, right, Helen, until September, sorry, until August. If it's not September, it must be August. Uh, there's an opportunity to see the Other Side of the Hill documentary, which is a 30-minute film about creation care and about the ways in which we are responsible and accountable to the world that God gives us. There's information in your bulletin about Habitat for Humanity and how right now there's a gift doubling opportunity, a matching gift. Uh, we want you to pay attention to some of the midsummer through end of summer opportunities that we have before you, including the opportunity to celebrate our historic sanctuary that will be 150 years old. This congregation is a bit older than that, but 150 years of the historic sanctuary. We also have a night at the Muni coming up and a movie night out back, an opportunity to volunteer at Earth Dance Farm and St. Patrick's Center. You can read more about all of these things in your bulletin and on our website. We are going to have some fellowship time outdoors. Which way are we going? We're going out back, if that's comfortable for you, if you want to do that. So you can go down the hall or you can go around the building um, if you would like to have some fellowship time with each other. Uh, distanced, but uh, you can shout, right, and you can hear each other. We're still living into this reality. Thank you again for choosing to be with us in person um, or on Facebook Live. And as we go from this place, we are the light. We are the love of God. We are the expression of Jesus that maybe someone hasn't felt or heard or experienced before. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.